By Exxon Mobil, taking on the world's toughest energy challenges. By MetLife, I can do this. And by Head and Shoulders, respect the scalp, love the hair. Welcome back to Belmont Park, where Union Rags and John Velasquez has won the Belmont Stakes. It's the sixth time since 2000 that the Belmont winner ran in the Derby and then skipped the Freakness. And let's see how they did it with our Pacific Life race replay. This is the horse that did not break at all in the Kentucky Derby. It cost him all chance. This horse is fast from the starting gate if he needs to be, and he was today. Johnny got a flyer with him. He breaks excellent, clean, gives him a little bit of a tap on the shoulder just to get him involved, and the speed was legitimate early on. The, the fractions were right. Johnny had to love where he was right now as they entered the first turn, Randy. But then the fraction slowed down. <laughs> Half mile and 49 and one-fifth seconds. They went six furlongs in one minute, 14 and three-fifths, which is slow by triple crown standards, certainly, but Union Rags and Johnny Velasquez saving all the ground. Painter, the beneficiary of those fractions on the front end, just like Bodemeister in yep. Freakness, everything his own way. The, the thing about uh, Union Rags right here is that he switched off with these slow fractions and he's put into a perfect spot right here as they come into home right now take a look who's on the outside right there julian le peru on attican there's no chance that they're gonna they're gonna let uh, johnny out at this point right now so he's got to just hope that mike slides off the rail just enough to get through and johnny's actually having to wait right now until about five strides from now right? and when you watch this finish keep in mind there were many out there who questioned union rags ability to get the mile and a half they said that his sire, Dixie Union, meant that he couldn't get a mile and a half, even though the female side of his pedigree was replete with stamina. No problem at all getting the 12 furlongs right here as he squeezes through the inside. Mike Smith's got to be thinking, oh, no, not again. <laughs> exactly, and I'll tell you what, Johnny, he, this horse, he needed every step of the way. Dullahan, what happened to him? Well, this is what happened to him about midway through the race, as Randy mentioned. The pace was slowed uh, down dramatically by Mike Smith and Painter. Look at this back here. Dullahan losing all chance, getting forced out of his game. It's tough to recover from getting shuffled back from a good position all the way back to next to last. You know, but even when he got out, he didn't really raise any heck. You heard Javier Castellano wonder if maybe that fast workout earlier in the week was too fast. Maybe it did take some starch out of him here. And Bob Baffert, another narrow loss after two with Bodemeister. Trying to hold on. Mike Smith gave him every chance to win. And for Bob Baffert, the third time he's narrowly been beaten in the Belmont Stakes. That was our Pacific Life race replay. Baffert beaten ahead with Silver Charm in 97, beaten the nose with Real Quiet in 98. Painter just lost today. Union Rags is the Belmont champion. Belmont Stakes is official, running 230.42 as Union Rags pays 750. Painter second, Adigan the long shot third, paying 1060 in the show spot. The exacta 3140, $248 for the dollar trifecta. And as you see, the dollar superfecta payoff as well. Union Rags, 750 to win the Belmont Stakes. And a couple of moments ago, Bob Newmar had a chance to talk to Mike Smith. Uh, he must have been disappointed, Bob. Yeah, no doubt he was devastated. The deja vu element of this, Preakness versus Belmont. But here's the point. Mike Smith blamed himself for the loss, said a veteran rider should never allow his horse to drift off the rail, thus allowing John Velasquez and Union Rex to sneak up the inside and nail him on the wire. Mike Smith said it should never happen to a veteran rider like me. Here's Bob Costas. My camera. Which camera's mine? Ready. All right, a makeshift situation here for the presentation of the trophy. Steve Dunker is the chairman of the New York Racing Association, and he will make that presentation. Steve? Thank you, Bob. First, uh, just a quick thank you to our New York Racing fans who support us all day, every day, all year long, and our great horsemen. Now to the race. Johnny V, what a ride. Holy cow, that was sensational. And Union Rags, as gutty a gritty a race as you can run. To Johnny V, Michael Matt, and especially Mrs. Wyeth, Congratulations, your colt just passed the test of a champion. Congratulations. Wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know.
know who's going to take custody of it, but you can hold on to it for the moment, Steve. Mrs. Mrs. Wyeth, you sold you sold Union Rags and then repurchased the horse. Why? Because I knew I came. I had a dream. I knew he would make it. I only have that racehorse and a half of another, a claimer, and I knew Michael could do it with him. It was my dream, and he made it come through today. He and Johnny. I knew he could do it. And nobody would have gotten through on the rail other than Johnny today. I can tell you that. That was unbelievable. He just said, move over, I'm coming. <laughs> he believed in the horse. And Michael got him there. It was an unbelievable job. Thank you, Mrs. Wyeth. John, quickly, your thoughts on the tactics. Our time is short. I thought, I thought it worked out perfectly. I wanted to break, get a good break, get in a nice, com comfortable position that he was going forward. Uh, and down the quarter pole, I was just hoping that I get in a, nice, a nice little room that it, he could go through there. And then I, I got to give it to the horse. He did it all for me. When I asked him, he was there for me. And he responded all the way to the wire. So I'm very, very glad that I got on him. I'm very glad that I knew him. And he, he worked out just fine for us. And Michael Match, you thought you had a horse with triple crown potential. Bad trip in the Derby, but what a way to end the last of the three triple crown contests. Well, I'm just glad for Phyllis and the horse that uh, we really got to see the real union rags. We go to Tom Hammond. All right, Bob, and finally some good luck for Union Rags after all that bad luck. Uh, Mike Smith said he shouldn't have let him through on the inside. What do you think? Well, I think there's a couple different factors. There's, there was enough horse, a big enough hole, and he was game enough to go through there. The real Union Rags showed up today. You know, he had some adversity here last year. He's two for two at this racetrack now, and he overcame that adversity here at Churchill or at uh, Belmont Park last year. So I think a very, very good performance for him today. Back in March, if you had told a whole lot of horse racing people that we get to the Belmont Stakes with the possibility to win a triple crown as we had earlier this week they would have all said right Union Rags will be the horse well there was the disappointment in the Derby caused a lot of people to jump off the bandwagon they said he wasn't tough they said he matured last year they caught up to him now he couldn't get the mile and a half well today he was mature he was tough and he got the mile and a half better than anybody and he returned to the scene of his greatest triumph prior to today the Champagne Stakes which he won last year he got some good luck and he got the job done let's go back to Bob Costas well as was briefly noted earlier congratulations go to Michael Mass and to John Velasquez but when you think about Bob Baffert he has won nine triple crown races could have won with a little bit of luck I guess all three this time his horse Bodie Meister twice and today painter run down right at the end by the combined